I went into acting originally because um, my teachers told me that I was good at it. So I just thought I'd try and keep the peace and keep everybody happy and just have an easier time at school by just doing what I was told. Um, but I think the main reason that I got involved was originally until I was about 16 I wanted to be in the Royal Marines and I was convinced that that was what I was going to do in my life and I was going to be a Royal Marine. And um, then I kind of had an epiphany that all I knew about the Royal Marines and soldiers and the army and everything was from films and TV programmes like Saving Private Ryan and things and I kind of thought, oh, well they, they've done a really good job of making me believe it and you know really invest in these programmes but they've, they're not real soldiers, they're just play acting. And then I kind of thought, well, then here's a job where you can one day be a soldier and then the next day you can be a lawyer and then a doctor and then a fireman and it just seemed like the most exciting opportunity in the world that I wouldn't ever have to pick one job, I could have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds before I die. So that's kind of the reason I decided to stick with it. One of my favourite moments from my career so far is probably when I got to go to the Arctic Circle with Rennie Harlan for three months to do a film. Um, just because it was such a an extreme environment to work in and also one of the one of the other actors said to me would you rather have a, a career that's built on working in studios and having people bringing you coffee and sitting in a lovely little fabric chair every day or would you rather go to the far end of the scale and work in some really harsh conditions and really feel like you've you've earned your paycheck so being able to say that I've been to the Arctic Circle for work and then come back alive and have a film at the end of it it's a pretty good feeling it's a really exciting time to be, to be a British actor at the moment. I think they've gotten more attention than they ever have throughout history. If you look at even things like HBO, that's a classic American big channel, big cable channel. It's dominated by British actors. And that, that kind of speaks volumes in terms of where we stand and how respected we are within the industry on a global level. And I think that um, for a long time, British TV and British film was just basically trying to replicate uh, American kind of values and replicate American culture and, and art and I think in the last few years we've kind of become a bit more confident and we've built a much more of a kind of strong cultural identity and I think so much has happened in the last 10 years and it's informed so much of you know you look at the rise of Shane Meadows there's nothing American about any of those films, and then that's given rise to people like Paddy Considine, who's in turn managed to, you know, highlight actresses like um, Olivia Corman and, and Peter Mullen. I think that there's a real sense of being proud to be British, and that isn't getting lost in the kind of global whirlpool of culture. It's really standing out and speaking up for itself. Yeah, that's a great thing. My style icon is probably Steve McQueen. And I just think if, if you if you can't understand why then there's something wrong with him. I just think he's probably the coolest person that's ever lived ever. I know a lot of people say like Frank Sinatra at one end or like James Dean at the other, but I think he's somewhere in the middle, Steve McQueen, because he can look really sophisticated and really refined, but then also he's got the kind of like biker military combat thing going on. It's somewhere in the middle, and I think he occupies a space that's like it's just traditional masculinity cool laid back simple but with a kind of little bit of a hint of aggression a little bit of revel about it you know so i i i think he's such a dude i'd like to dress like him every day <laughs>